Hey everybody, this is Petey from the Spinner Rack, and today I want to do a retirement party. Now, these never happen in comic books, but um, ultimately, when, um, well, I want to use the backdrop of when John Buscema retired, and I think Barry Windsor Smith sort of said, how does a penciler, an artist, retire? And he was right. John Buscema didn't actually retire. He kept on doing comic books. He They would find work for him at DC and Marvel. He did um, Batman for Marvel and the Batman Black and White. He did Just Imagine Superman. He did some, I think, some odds and ends for Marvel too. But they were finding stuff for him doing during the last days of his work. Load in the same for Steve Ditko. Steve Ditko was producing comic books well before, you know, well into the point where he passed. And he reintroduced his character, Mr. A. Right, look, that's one assigned. Wow. And we also have another person, well well into retirement, who's still pulling out some work. Pages that he'd done earlier for um but this was published in Tops. Um I think that's Captain Victory. No, that's not Captain Victory, Captain Glory. And this is Bombast right here. They were from Tops. So since we've established these artists continue to draw well into their Retirement. We'll go to <laughs> the, I guess, the artist I know, I know the most about. This would be the last published book by DC. Well, there's a cover by Byrne, but this is the last book Byrne did. He did the last, uh, the three first three issues of the Atom with um, Gail Simone. Now they did this book here, and. You know, this was also with, um, this was a Grant Morrison, this was a Grant Morrison um, idea, Gail Simone, Byrne, and Trevor Scott, some gorgeous stuff here. Um, this was to be, he was saying he was going to move to commi commissions and, um, and possibly some self-publishing, something like that. So it was a sad day. Sad day by all, because I think the couple of books got canceled, the Doom Patrol and the Blood of the Demon, and Action Comics was kind of ended. But luckily, two things came up the pike from IDW, which I talked about in our last video, and one of them would be FX, right? So we had FX. Now, FX is by Wayne Osborne and John Byrne. This is the third issue. I had to go through my collection. It was hard to find this stuff because I got so much stuff in there. We have this book. We have the credits. We have all these characters created by um, Wayne Osborne and drawn by um, John Byrne. And I think this was a commi commission thing. So ultimately, there's some nice work here from them. And some really action-packed stuff. I always sort of consider this sort of image done right, stuffed on time. But a lot of characters created on the page. A lot of stuff going on. To not reveal too much that's going on here, I'll just give you the rest of the covers, what I have on me right now. You can see... But here's the classic FX character. I think this was colored by one of the fans. He's probably a pro right now. But... um. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. Greg and Jerry's Color Shop. So, and this, issue six, there was a second trade you know, of FX, not done by Byrne. But at the same time that was going on, we also had, IDW had Byrne do Romulans. Now I have this in many formats. I have the trades of John Byrne's entire Star Trek work here. But let's deal with this first. This would be the easiest. And this book works perfectly in the Treasury Edition. I'm like see all this. Like this. They've only two treasuries I think that IDW did. They did one for the the what is it? The Rocketeer. So this is some really nice stuff. Let me jump ahead. Um, this is also the next miniseries. 
very having a sort of Desi Lu color, and some of the classic villains. It really works nice, right? Do I want to go through anything else here? We'll also. What can I pull out from here? Because this has the same story, but this also has Gary Seven, and this is one of my favorite stories, the third story of Gary Seven. I think the printing. I think John Byrne print this at um yeah this right here my name is legion this is one of my favorite stories that of this of this series but there's a bunch of good stories in here and this is all during the period of the 60s with all the unrest and whatnot and you had this positive character that's sort of revolutionary for the time or sort of like um you know like um martin luther king or something like that some of a mix in between there what else did i want to show in here quickly some more romulans there oh i almost forgot how could i forgotten number one if you're a number one fan, if you're from the cage, she gets her own classic series. She takes the lead. It's nice stuff by Byrne. Oh, this is the sequence. Sort of um homage to Neil Adams. I think this really works. So her going through the the pipes in the in the ship and then in here the approach changes this is really nice right here so then the approach changes having a little gray tone effects in here yeah this is another good one go to my I'm just gonna keep saying it's another good one but since this is a part of the, the, the retirement party we're just gonna keep celebrating what else on there? Yeah, this I love this other. It would be interesting to see how he would render Iron Man with this effect to get the iron sort of effect in there. And there is Christopher Pike's in there. I think Spock shows up. There's Spock over there. And then the rest is this is where everyone meets. Then we have oh, they can't reveal that. But then. <laughs> This right here is Leonard Nimoy, um, Frontier Doctor. So you have this nice volume of the entire run right there. Watch out for that light. All right, the entire run is there. And then you can also get, no, no, not that. So while at the same time, they're also trying to get Brown to do Angel, which he was a fan of. And it worked. So... In this one, we have the first angel story. It's the collection of all of his... No, this is not the first angel story. This is Angel versus Frankenstein. Uh, the evil angel and Burns Frankenstein monster. We have the all pencil stories. I, I, for the texture, I would go for the original comic books. That really, it really shines here, but this is still solid if you want to get it all in one volume. It's really nice stuff with some red in there. I think he was just talking about the split face here. Let's get out of this. I'm not revealing too much. But here, this is the one. This is... <laughs> this is Angel vs. Frankenstein Part 2. And this is what my father would have called... Magnificently ugly, right? This is some gorgeous stuff here. A lot of detail. Um, some of my favorites of of Burns. Let's not reveal the ending. You should go out and buy it. But then you have this story here. I think it's the Music of Spears. And this one, yeah, Lauren, the Music of Spears. This one, the inking, is closest to Burns Fantastic Four inking, which is really interesting to see him sort of go back to it. But, you know, some classic, 
classic um, Angel stuff. Then there were some trades that came out. The next men. That's part two. And part one. All in black and white. I should just go to my favorites of the next men. I mean, all of these guys are my favorites, but um, here it is, issue six. This is where I got started to get used to this new style Byrne was doing. And right here, this is the one right there. So that's it. So I showed you that. And the next one, then he also continued that. So this is all the stuff that was either reprinted or done while burn after he retired right where is my nope that's not it I want to find here we go this is the greatest issue ever done issue 22 and we have Jasmine in the sewer sort of similar to Wolverine in the sewer a little more dramatic just really playing with all the tools here and this is just the perfect perfect comic book right here can't be beat he also continued the next man after this but not before and i think i showed you guys this before the danger unlimited trade and this has danger unlimited and it also has babe in it there's babe right so while you're at it and you're retired why not create new series to work on so should I do this? I'm not doing these in any order you got the highways which is sort of like um, the more the more of a story of these sort of characters who sort of work in space similar to the cast of um, of alien but these and just get into little squabbles within space so you got all this cool stuff here it's almost just definitely, um, I'm saying all of it's a must buy. Oh no, that, that's coming last. We get to the superhero stuff last. This one right here, the Cold War. This is with Michael Swan, who's like a James Bond sort of character. This is one of my favorite pages for some reason. They really look like she was disheveled after the, getting hit. And the silent sequence early. And this race car sequence. It's a lot of funky stuff in here. Well, I guess. And then the snow. This is. This sequence in the snow right here. Did not even get into too much of the story. Yeah, this portion right here. Well, the fight in the snow. It is really jam packed with stuff. Alright. So let's not give any of that away. Um, possibly one of the tops of this period, Doomsday Point One, another space one, but closer to R. And this one, the cover is done by Byrne also. I guess it gets a digital sort of painting. And the space, you know, space shuttle type of space satellite characters, characters in the space satellite. Of course, it's nice dark shadows. It's a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff in here. Oh, there. And let's get to the superhero stuff. We have um, Trio, which was met with mixed reviews. But I would... Oh, and this one's printed on really nice paper. So, yeah, you know, this is the same paper it was printed on in the comic books. So this right here, so if you're not jazzed up about the characters, then you have this. Before Aquaman fought the deep, before they did it in the movie, we had these rough amphibious characters. And um, look at this stuff. And, and then a the Nautilus. I think me and a friend of mine were talking about the Nautilus, which was a cool character. And a lot of cool elements, comic elements in here, right? You got Trio. So if you're if you on Trio, then you had Triple Helix, where people then say, Oh, it's not finished. <laughs> it's supposed to do the Conclave. But um, Triple Helix is sort of the, obviously, 
similar to the X-Men. I think he said it's shamelessly borrowing from Marvel. And these characters have a dark secret. And um, Golgotha is in it. Look at look at that. Look at this is he'd be two, but he's um they call him scissors. And obviously that's paper. Who's no who's one? And then these like these robots, killer robots, Golgotha. Now we found out how Golgotha got out of got out of um Danger Unlimited. If you needed to figure it out. So yeah, if you were iffy on it, then you have to get um, Triple Helix, right? So we're coming to the tail end. Is it? Yeah, I guess so. So instead of, instead of, um, when these books, I got one other book to find. I don't have it with me right now, which is Jurassic Park, which is definitely a favorite. I'm not sure why not. I didn't bring it with me. So here is... The photo novels is something that John Byrne was trying to do uh, at his leisure, but then I think Chris Grayell saw it and said, "Hey, I think they'll publish it." Paramount wanted, liked it, approved it, and then we got this nice series, right? And some of the best stories. Well, no, there's. I think Mirror Mirror isn't in here, so Mirror Mirror isn't in here. So there's still books for you to get. So, as much as I like this one, you still need to get, like, especially Hollow Man. That's really good. Chekhov is really good. And this one, some of the, some of the female characters. And you don't have the, the Great Tribble Hunt. So, there's stuff to get. There's still stuff to get. But this is, uh, you know, as I keep saying, the master of the form. And cool stuff here. And the last sort of... um. So the outside of the outside of the photo novels and the I guess reprint edition is this coloring book. And we also have it in color. I think I showed you this before when I was doing the Perez and, and John Byrne. And here we go. We have Leonard O'Grady killing it. Look at that. Look at that bringing everything to it. This one, he just since it's a coloring book, like he just allowed to play to do his best, Lynn Varley, using all the tools possible. All right, and just skip ahead. Ah, oh, look at that. There we go. And to end the party, there's also a ton of trades. You gotta get the hidden years. It's successful. It's a success in trade, and of course, one just written by Byrne. Iron Man, War Games, they found a new name for the Armor Wars 2. This one has the whole run. It has Byrne and John Romita Jr. This classic stuff here. You know, look at that. I found actually opened up to the right page. And then yeah, it's uh, sad to see John Romita Jr. go off and do Daredevil. But then we got Paul Ryan killing it. Look at it's just like obviously it's hard to follow, but then I think at this one, Paul Ryan who got the top bill in here, he got Fighter Ranger, so he was allowed to just put together fight however he wanted to, and we get a real nice fight scene between Rhodey and and Fing Fang Foom. All right, I am going to do my last thing. Damn it, this party isn't isn't it? Isn't right without um, Jurassic Park, Devils in the Desert. But I'm going to end it here. Spinarak out.